Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the second album from the Chemical Brothers, Dig Your Own Hole. Alright, I think this is probably the big one. Uh, Exit Planet Dust may often be considered a classic and a trendsetter, but I see Dig Your Own Hole mentioned as the Chemical Brothers' best album more often by fans than any of the other ones. It's the Chemical Brothers album I've gotten the most requests to talk about as well. Easily. <laughs> now, Exit Planet Dust was rough, it was intense, it was raw, and this follow-up was only rougher, darker, more intense, just overall up the ante in basically every department. Now, as some may remember from my Exit Planet Dust review, I found that album to be excellent from a technical or more objective standpoint, but never really clicked with me from a personal enjoyment standpoint. There was a part of me that wondered if maybe the raw aesthetic of that album just kind of pushed me away. Though, this album is a lot more raw and grittier in general, and yet somehow it's a huge step up personal enjoyment wise. Now, while I don't love this album all the way through, there is a uh, hole in this album that uh, I will have to discuss, but as a whole, uh, I got way more out of this than I did with Exit Planet Dust. So uh, I'll start off going, tra going down track by track. Uh, just like with Exit Planet Dust, the album starts out with a highly iconic, uh, more commercial track. The intense and banging block rockin' beats! This track was actually the first track I ever heard from the Chemical Brothers. I think I first heard it in some kind of car commercial and later rediscovered it via the old iTunes Essentials playlists. God, I miss those things. There's not really much for me to say about that one, though just like Leave Home, it does a great job of setting the tone for the album. But then the album really starts to pick up when we hit the title track, which creates a much more fast-paced groove that has a lot of funk guitars. Really fun track there. Uh, and then there's Electro Bank, with an eight-minute track that has a lot to it. Starting now with a lot of muffled and distorted vocals from DJ Cool Herc. Continuing at that fast-paced tempo uh, from the title track with a similarly explosive groove, though uh, a bit more literally this time since there are li like there are actual explosion sound effects here. And of course it includes a heavily catchy sample of rapper Schooly D repeatedly asking, Who is this doing this synthetic type of alpha beta psychedelic funkin'? Who is this doing this synthetic type of alpha beta psychedelic funkin'? And at the end of this track, it slows down the tempo, adding in a lot of super distorted and fuzzy guitar cap sort of sounds, also allowing it to transition into the much slower but still no less aggressive or danceable Piku, or Paiku, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe what makes this track so appealing to me, especially since the main groove is basically just playing the same note twice over and over. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh. But the beat has a bounciness to it that's hard to resist, and there is a, like a middle section bridge that has a pretty cool atmosphere to it as well. Now, after this, the album starts to lose me a little bit. Setting Sun is uh, easily the most aggressive and intense track on this whole album, and that should really be saying something. And while I still really like it, I also kind of have to be in the right mood for it. And, you know, it also kinda cuts off the flow of the continuous mix the album previously had going. But in terms of, like, sheer intensity and aggressiveness, this track is seriously unmatched in their whole discography, and the vocals of Noel Gallagher help bring it down to earth a little bit. Like I said, great song, and if you love the more aggressive side of the chemicals, I would not be surprised if you picked this as a favorite. I just personally wouldn't, since I don't have a single aggressive bone in my body. But unfortunately, after this is the hole in the album that I mentioned before. You got a stretch of three tracks in a row that do basically nothing for me and just kind of feel like their only purpose is to keep up the flow of the album. It Doesn't Matter, Don't Stop the Rock, and Get Up On It Like This are all just, eh, songs that are better as background music than anything, and prevent me from really giving the full thumbs up on this album. I mean, they're not terrible, uh, but they're all unremarkable. Not to say there's nothing of substance, uh, there's some cool 303 riffs, and the beats are still all really strong, and as I said, they, they don't ruin the flow of the album in any way. If anything, they flow together too well and don't stand out as a result. And this is one point at which I'm also going to have to point towards Exit Planet Dust is something that album did better. In terms of those Acid House 303 riffs and all that stuff, I would much rather listen to Three Little Birdies Down Beats or Chemical Beats over Don't Stop the Rock. Those tracks are much more memorable and engaging to me. 
it doesn't matter and get up on it like this at least have some kind of memorable vocal samples to their name but there's there's still nothing here showing you know these guys on top of their game thankfully right after this the album picks right back up with some great material at the end Lost in the K-Hole, in addition to having the strong beats and bass line like most of the tracks on here, also has some really nice sounding melodic elements, obviously alluding to that sort of, you know, drug trip feel that the title is referencing. I, I think the K-Hole, I'm pretty sure, is a reference to ketamine. And there's Where Do I Begin, which is another popular track featuring Beth Orton again. Kind of like a less bitter sounding version of Alive Alone that also happens to be more hard hitting, even ending with what sounds like Power Tools rhyming. I remember also seeing this track in some dumb college movie montage once. Uh, but whatever. It's a good track, and the album probably could have ended there if they wanted. Would have been satisfying enough an experience at that point that could mirror Exit Planet Dust pretty well. But instead, they end with the Private Psychedelic Reel, which is probably the single best ending to any Chemical Brothers album, and possibly the best ending to any Big Beat album ever. Just. Holy Christ, I cannot say enough good things about this track. Like, it's mainly based around a riff of sitar notes that sound like they're sampled from Beatles' Norwegian Wood. And it continually builds up and gets more awesome as time goes on. It's insanely intense and has lots of elements from random abrasive synth effects to Jonathan Donahue playing one hell of a clarinet solo, which is a lot better than I just made it sound, and it, I don't know, it is just such an insanely good track. M maybe it ends a little abruptly, but yeah, this track alone carries up my opinion of the entire album and redeems any qualms I might have had with it otherwise. So yeah, now to discuss the album overall. Like I said, this album does have a more raw and gritty aesthetic to it that even at Exit Planet Dust did, and yet I got so much more enjoyment out of it. First thought is that this album had a better variety, but it's really not by much. Uh, it still has tracks that run together and tracks that stick out more, and you know, Exit Planet Dust did not really fall short in this department. But I think what probably makes Dig Your Own Hole better for me, even in some of the weaker moments, uh, was the mixing. Exit Planet Dust I don't think was mixed very well in retrospect. At least the version I have sounds fairly tinny and flat. Dig Your Own Hole, meanwhile, has a lot more grit and sounds much more satisfying overall. Probably because it's bassier resonates better with me. I. I don't know. But in terms of recommendation, uh, this one should honestly go without saying. I do absolutely have my issues with it, and it's not exactly, you know, fine-tuned to my specific taste, at least no more so than their debut was, but I still enjoy the hell out of this album, and at any time I put it on. It's a major part of electronic music history that is worth everyone's time. It's a classic as well. There's really not much else that needs to be said and I'm overall feeling an 8.5 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.